Okay, what you're looking at now is the mean annual atmospheric pressure at sea level and surface winds. Okay, this is a 10-year simulation, okay, put together. And what I want you to note is at the poles, which is down here and up here, the Coriolis effect is the weakest. And it gets stronger as you head towards the equator. But what do we see in real life? We see strong high and low pressure areas way away from where the Coriolis effect, which is causes spin, all right, to occur. In fact, when you're doing weather, okay, before I get there, see down here, see how strong the pressure is near the poles? And see how the winds, now if, if they put wind barbs on here to indicate how strong the winds are, you would find that they are strongest as you get up towards the poles, okay? It's the way it is. All right, as you get towards the equator, they get more and more calm and more, uh, they call them here more trade winds. All right, why? Highs and lows don't form here. Okay, this is called the intertropical convergence zone. All right, where air is either converging or diverging. The Coriolis effect, if it exists, is so weak that it doesn't even cause the spin down here. You will never get a hurricane at the equator. Never, ever, ever. And if you do, something is seriously wrong with the earth. Okay, run for the hills because it's over. You're never even going to have a, a low pressure system of any sort or high pressure system right at the equator. All right, in this area here. So if the Coriolis effect, which causes the spinning of air because the, the atmosphere and the earth is spinning, okay, and it causes deflection, you should have stronger highs and lows in the ITCZ. Okay, intertropical convergence zone. But we see the exact opposite. All right, do you think it's windier in Boston and Chicago or uh, down in Cuba and Florida? You better believe it's up in Boston and Chicago. Okay, um, and people say, well, there's less temperature changes at the, at the, uh, uh, it, at down here at 90, at uh, the equator because, yeah, 90 degrees. Um, so, um, because there's less temperature changes, you have less weather. Really? Go just slightly north at 20 degrees or 30 degrees north, and you'll find the strongest pressure areas you've ever seen, Bermuda Highs. Here's the Bermuda High. Someone was asking, how do the ocean currents, uh, how would they be formed if the Earth isn't spinning? My question is, look at this. How would they be formed if the Earth is spinning? It would all be going one direction. Take one example, there's a Bermuda High. This They used to call it that, I hope they still do. A high pressure area that just sits up here, all right? And you have a clockwise flow around it, and that clockwise flow over and over and over again causes the water to move this direction. Warm water down in the Gulf comes up along the east coast of the United States. It's called the Gulf Stream. That water is then sent over towards England. That's why England, way up high here, is usually warmer than the mid-Atlantic even in the United States because it's being fed warm, warm Gulf Stream water. And the problem the last few years has been this flow has been cut off from getting to England and Western Europe, so they've had severely cold winters. That's why this Bermuda High has, has broken down as far as the ocean currents, steering the ocean currents. Now, I'm not saying that's the reason why it stopped. There's other things going on. But that's how ocean currents move, by the prevailing pressure systems that are over them. Okay, I can tell you, I, I've never studied the West Coast uh, as far as uh, how the, the water works. But I can tell you, just by looking at this, this there's high pressure, looks like uh, just west of Hawaii, which means you're going to have a steady north to southeast wind coming down along the coast. So it's going to be cold along, the, the water in the Pacific is going to be driven down from Alaska Washington and Oregon is going to be driven down towards Mexico. So it's going to be a cold flow uh, either right on the coast or just off the coast uh, in the west because why? I can see high pressure is there. So I can tell you which way the wind, the uh, air, um, ocean, I'm sorry, is going to move. It's going to move generally north to south along the coast. Along the east coast, it's going to generally go south to north. Why? Has nothing to think of it. If we're spinning this direction at a thousand miles per hour, why would they, why would the water head south to north here and north to south here? Makes no sense if we're spinning. Everything makes sense if we're sitting still. All right. Proof. The Coriolis effect is BS.